Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Our World Today. The Unionist Perspective. We're very happy to be with you. And yeah, today we're going to talk about something very special. Uh, had a lot of news stories this week. And we felt that the common theme was about political agendas and sometimes misdirections. And we're going to see examples of how, um, you know, political agendas can sometimes be misguided and how sometimes they're pretty divinely guided and reflect, you know, the choices that the, the, the people make, kind of like a continuation of of what we talked about last week. So um, as we have a lot of news to talk about today, I'm going to open it up to the team and see what do you guys feel like starting with? Um, do we start with like, we have like two stories for Texas. Um, we have Serbia, we have Gen Z and, and work environment. What do we have else? I don't remember. And um, we were talking about Saudi Arabia and its approach to LGBTQ plus people. Yes. How exactly. it was sending different messages. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So your pick, Texas, Saudi Arabia, or Serbia? Who are we moving to today? Um, what do you guys feel? I feel I'll Texas. Yeah, I was going to say Texas, too, since we yeah. talked about it last week, we can kind of start there. Yeah, right. So, Texas. Um, so, in my understanding, and again, sometimes, like, with, like, uh, very, like, particular specific stories about my shooting, I don't know everything, um, but... It feels like because of this latest mass shooting, um, there, is, there has been some police, political and policy movements around in Texas. And basically, there is an, an article that um, happened to really speak with the voice of the people of Texas, if if we can say so, and say that before this, um, the people of Texas were pretty much feeling left out, um, not supported, and uh, basically not cared about. So yeah, I wondered if you guys wanted to go deeper into what happened and and then like a little bit of facts and then afterwards we're we're going to debunk what really happened there and um what's to heal yeah i guess i guess i could start from the so from the um mass shooting that was in um Cleveland, Texas, like the, the one involving um, the, the family who was from Honduras. So we talked about that one last week. And at the time, um, I was speculating about like why this was allowed to happen because this, this, the, the shooter was like unloading um, rounds in his yard on a regular basis. And I thought that that was, that was just really weird. And I was like, why wasn't a closer eye kept on him? You know what I mean? Um, by law enforcement. And I was like, well, maybe the communities don't feel safe if some people are undocumented immigrants in, the, in America, right? Well, then an article came out and it said, actually people from around the neighborhood had been reporting this guy, had been calling him in on a regular basis. And the police always pretty much ignored it because they were like, there's nothing illegal or wrong about someone shooting a gun on their own property. And so that's kind of how it was. And then 
the the police department of that county was just saying, um, yeah, we like they have not too many staff and they they patrol like a, a huge area. I think it, it's like 700 square miles or 1300 square kilometers is what they said, or maybe 1800. Sorry, I don't know. And um, basically they were saying they got there as fast as they could, like for them getting there in like 10 or 11 minutes was ex exceedingly fast. And so I was like, wow, so that's so interesting. And I was like, I was wondering what are the implications of all of that? And um, yeah, like why, what that says about like, the relationship between like people and the police, you know? Um, yeah, I just wanted to see, like, what do you guys feel about that? What are your thoughts about that? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like you bring up two aspects, like you kind of touched upon this and it's kind of like, I guess you only would know this living in Texas, um, but there's like a culture around guns and like having guns going hunting you know there's a lot of people here that are very much into all that kind of stuff and like and I don't know I know this is a rural area so I don't know how much land he has but like just depending on how much land you have it's not that I guess big of a surprise if someone is you know shooting a gun but I feel like the, which I feel like plays into the sort of like apathy maybe among the police officers. Um, but I, I do feel like another aspect of it is just what you said with the relationship between the people and the police. And especially since this is an area that has a large um, like Hispanic population, a large immigrant population um and even the article pointed it out like there just hasn't been um a good connection a good relationship between the police department and this one specific community and um and i was feeling more apathy as i was reading it and you know reading into the the reactions of the officers like oh we're in a rural area the roads are bad we're understaffed but I'm like, those are all very like fixable things, you know, it just requires like some will and, um, you know, a desire to, to do it. And so I feel like on one side, there's like this fear um, and, you know, distrust, but I feel like it's further emphasized by just how apathetic the police seem to be. And, it, you know, especially like, like it was pointed out, like if I get a call about someone shooting a gun in a yard over like, you know, an armed burglary, I'm going to prioritize the burglary. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's part of like being in Texas. You just expect people to like shoot guns in certain areas. It's really, you know, mm -hmm. it's really interesting, <laughs> the culture here. Yeah. Well, I think too, the picture taken um, was like the houses were like, fairly close together actually I think they pro he probably had like a big a big enough yard and like could fire um that maybe there's like an open like field out back and he could like fire um in his backyard or something but I mean that's weird to me you know like with my life experience and if someone regularly shot a gun in like houses around houses like that I would be like what are you doing like because no it wasn't like like he he like lived in a farmhouse that was on like a 10 acre tract of land like this guy was like shooting it in like his backyard yeah. little backyard and I'm like why what? yeah I know but like did the policemen take the time to listen or did they feel like they had power to they probably said like, well, if we have to go down to every town where there is like a maniac shooting <laughs> and then we discover that it's actually a pretty big farmland and people are just complaining like, 
Yeah, and it's actually really part of the apathy that Andrea was talking about. And we even mentioned last week, I was like, there is a deep culture of like people like electric Trump just to have peace with their guns um, in 2016. And there's also this deep rural Texas and there's then there's a deep, deep rural Texas because it's so big. And, and so there are, there are all of these cultural barriers that almost encourages people into their choice of either apathy or powerlessness and powerlessness on both sides. But um, yeah, there's definitely something to change because it's not going to, it was definitely not a farmland, but like who's going to change it? I feel like it's, um, similar to a doctor that really like doesn't um you know relate to you or doesn't listen to you misdiagnoses you and just gives you vitamin c when actually you could have that blood test and realize that you were a diabetic for years you know it's um, the kind of things like that like what are people doing with their power and again we're, we're going back to power and uh and powerlessness what what are people doing with the power that they have and also are very supported in actually doing the work that they need to because like they need to cover so much ground in the state like it's just yeah and um i i bet like there's a feeling almost like reading this article of overwhelm on their side, of, on the police side. Um, but there is also the feeling that they maybe it was a wake up call, like it was like a true wake up call for Texas. And we were saying this, uh, you know, last week, it's like things like this are going to continue to happen until people make a different choice. And so I think I would probably take overwhelm and change over um, apathy any day, I guess. And um, that's something I think we regularly heal um, here in this community, but we're used to like going deeper than the overwhelm. Um, it's definitely not an ideal way to be woken up to your divine mission, but I think if it if it serves the good of Texas, um, and uh, if it's about choosing love afterwards, well, maybe that, that's the experience that some of them needed. And uh, I say that because we've had the, you know, the, we could take a step back from last week when the news were pretty hot and. Uh, feel better about talking about this and I'm not surprised that we're seeing also people talking uh, and the results of, of what happened last week now that everyone is taking a step back and uh, yeah it's pretty much like there's no surprise there like it's pretty much a spiritual lesson for most of them I mean I feel like a lot of people in Texas, because I've been kind of keeping track of all the shootings, you know, because there was a, a bunch more, or maybe not a bunch more, but like two or three more this past week. Um, and I feel like there's definitely more of a conversation of how much sense it makes to have guns the way we do. Um, and to like hear people in Texas talk about these things i mean it's it's just kind of surprising because you know it's just like the feel that you get in this area that i live in at least is just that i mean people are allowed to carry fire arms or firearms um like on university on the university campus and like you know just businesses like you open carry is a is a thing in this state and so there's obviously like this weird connection with like Texas, the Texas Rangers, Cowboys and like guns like that is that's like the sense I get from a lot of like native Texas like they're very proud of their Texas roots. And you know there's a lot of good in it. 
but I feel like one negative is this like almost stubbornness to just admit that guns maybe are they don't make sense in the way that maybe they did in like the 1800s like during the wild wild west or whatever when like America was like really developing and I, I feel like the discourse is like shifting more towards well does this really make sense because yes at the end of the day it is the person that's making the decision to use that gun but the fact that it's so readily available it just increases the likelihood that people are going to die and like the consequences are going to be more fatal and so um and obviously like i don't think america's gonna I don't know how long it's gonna take until we can get to the root problem of like why are so many people you know um deciding choosing to act with violence but the like the most I guess straight or like direct thing to address would be like this this thing with the guns you know like just and I'm not like pro or anti gun control, but it's obviously like something that needs to be addressed because I think a lot of things can be reduced in, in terms of like the damage that's just caused by people. What you're mentioning is very, very interesting. Um, first of all, yes, like having, seeing this discussion is tex in Texas, just a far cry from like even five years ago how it was and how we couldn't even discuss this but um you mentioned twice something about like um first you know there's a shift in consciousness and then there's like the stubbornness of like to assess people take some people that just you know are not understanding but it's not the same as the hating hundreds and then again, you, you mentioned this in, in a different way at the end, and I don't remember how, but it's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. It's the, I'm not anti or pro gun control. And, and I relate to this, but there's, there's something, there's a discussion to be had, and it's first going to be had on, on guns in Texas, especially to, you know, have a have a better understanding on, on the violence in the US. And it feels like the agendas of people or of staying with guns, like having open firearms in like um, businesses and, and on campus and things like that, you know, it's it's a misdirection because it's like I would be all for you know using guns for this hobbies that people have like hunting and doing it on a farm and and having it at, at your house and but like there is something about energy here and the energy of carrying a firearm at all times, what is the energy that this is causing? And isn't that the energy that people are talking about? They're not talking about erasing guns completely. I think everyone that has been speaking up about this is talking about the energy of like, what does it mean to carry a gun at all times like this? It doesn't feel safe. And I think it also, you know, when you open up, it, it is like an energy leak almost. Like when you open up this thing, like there, there's, you almost allow for a breach of people that are using this for violence. And that's why we see the mass shootings. That's why we see this, this family killed in their own home, like almost on their home property. And, um, yeah, it's just that's that's what I've always been feeling, at least for me. And 
I know now uh, being grown up that the solution is not to be anti gun control or pro gun control. And that's what you were referring to. It's like agendas are not to be polarized and controlling in order to have what you want. It's about knowing how to balance things. And uh, there's a balance that needs to be had in order for the energy of everyone to be respected. And that includes the energy of everyone around firearms. And that includes nuances and being able to have subtlety in your use of this responsibility and power again. And, and knowing that knowing how to carry like i'm not like you want to shoot for fun and 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 go at it on targets and and maybe transmit this culture to your kids like that's no problem but what energy are you using to bring this onto a campus when there's no need for this like i don't know no, and it's making me think like, you know, it's it's almost like if these if this these are the consequences of the choice that is being made and people continue to do it, it almost feels like, you know, kids that are like trying to drive a car that are not ready, they have not like reached that level of like responsibility. Cause I because we mentioned last week, I forgot it was like Sweden or Switzerland, but one of those countries, they have a right to bear arms, but they have very little incidents of like mass shootings and like, you know, violence at the rate that the United States does. So mm. obviously the issue isn't having the gun, but it's like, do you have that? It's almost like a spiritual preparedness. Like, do you have the the wisdom and the responsibility to you know, have such a deadly weapon because there is good use for it, especially if you're living in more rural areas and, you know, you don't have a lot of people around you, but there has to be some good foundation there, I think. And I don't think America energetically is there yet. Yeah, I, you know, you mentioning the immaturity energy, Isaiah, what, and I were just, Isaiah just mentioned that. Like, I think today or maybe yesterday, do you remember? Yeah, like he was talking about the immaturity and people not respecting what it means to like own a firearm. And I forgot that we also, I forgot we had talked about Switzerland, but to, it was Switzerland. But today I ended up stumbling right before, right before this talk, I was listening to, I stumbled upon a video about Switzerland and the gun culture. Um, yeah, <laughs> from the Daily Show. And it was also pretty funny because the he had this guy is with this um swiss gun instructor who does police and military firearm training and it's interesting because in switzerland like there hasn't been a mass shooting there for like 17 years but switzerland has ex really high gun ownership rates though and it has this every man like serves in the military or the militia um, Switzerland was invaded in 1792, and ever since then, they've had mandatory military service, like military training for men, because they're like, well, we don't want that to happen again. And so I'm like, wow, you guys, like, you're like, very, like, fastidious about this, like, you really, yeah. um, and the energy is much more, like, respectful, like, it's not like, oh, my God, like, I have a gun, woo, you know, it's more like, um, I, I actually don't know how to describe that energy, but that's so it's interesting. more yeah, okay. it's noble to me. Yeah. Like, that's so interesting. Like, you know? like, that's what it feels like, a nobility sort of energy. I would have yeah. sworn that it was Sweden. I, I didn't know this about Switzerland. And tell you what, I, I've been to Switzerland at least once. Like, I remember being... Eight years old, I was in Switzerland. Wow. I saw no guns. I I know people have them. They have them in their home, but I feel safe going to the homes of people in the mountains and just like knock knock knock. <laughs> hey, 
does your son want to play with us? You know, my siblings and I. And it, we didn't even like worry about that. Like I, I, I don't have it. And I've been pretty to this energy around guns and violence since I was a kid. Like I was very sensitive about that even more than today because uh, yeah, I was working through like theories about violence in movies, things like that. I didn't feel any of that I, in Switzerland. I don't think anyone going to Switzerland feels bad. I know that even people, you know, American people sometimes um, go to Europe for studies. And even when they're not in Switzerland, they go to Switzerland near like the summer because it's a really like beautiful place really. And there is no mention of, oh, actually Switzerland feels way more, you know, way closer energetically to the US than other European countries. There's no mention of that. And so, yeah, I think that's the most telling about the energy and the right use of energy. And there is like, it, it, it doesn't feel misguided in this instance it feels novel and I if you told me that like I would have loved like being there if you told me that there is such a high ownership rate of guns I, I saw no guns mm -hmm. <laughs> not at all and I'm sure some people had them on them um but like I've been like, I think I've been to Switzerland twice but basically I have family in Switzerland um I know no guns in sight, like no worries or fear about like mass shootings. Um, that's pretty crazy to me. Yeah, and it, I feel like it's ironic that Switzerland, at least in the US, because you see it a lot in like mainstream shows and movies, they have this reputation of being like neutral, yeah. cowards, like, you know, there's always like the white flag. <laughs> I feel like now that we're talking, you know, I'm getting like more of an energy of like, you know, wisdom and like being grounded into their strength. Like, I feel a, like a power in yeah. in that position, like, you know, having a population that's like ready to take arms, but yet they don't really have issues with these random acts of violence. Like there seems to be a lot more peace and cohesion mm -hmm. and yet they still have <laughs> well, we're, they're never going to be involved in like international wars but i feel like the energy of what we were saying is like they never want to be invaded again they want to protect themselves and that's funny because they use that protection um you know they use protection as, too as a way to own arms and and really like train and they train their people to own arms and we see a lot of people using that protection too in the US and they're like it it's um it just like for me it just shows that it's just energy and that's very interesting. Also Switzerland is it's very colorful. It's uh way more complex than I guess what we've been told about it because we, we're not taught much about Switzerland, only like it's investment or non-investment in wars. And yeah, we, they have they have problems too in there. Like they have problems about like poverty in, on the Italian Italian side and and maybe separation and in some of the counties and, and things like that. But like in no way in, in the poorest areas is there a um, highest rate of, of violence or imprisonment or things like that. So yeah, I feel like they they have some things, they, it's just a culture that has some things mastered, I guess. Yeah, it's it's cool to see. And I, I love um, how it connects to what Andy and all of us were talking about with how 
you know, like not trying to take sides and become polarized, like pro gun control, anti gun control, but to realize that there's wisdom here in in all facets, like there's something to it. And, and it's just really cool to see that because, um, yeah. And it also, it solves the constant bickering in the US and conundrums about like, you know, people sharing stories of like, oh, this person had a gun in a public place and like, shot the mass shooter like that happens a lot because there are a lot of mass shootings so statistically that's going to happen or people having guns and like yeah i protected myself with my gun you know from some criminal or something so they say you know that's virtuous and then obviously people say it's virtuous to have like gun controls as well like some right and it's just like yeah like both are true like there's like meaning in both of those sides and there's something good but we can't get too polarized and like the thing that they said in Switzerland is what 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 came across to me is that they they are very strict about who can own a firearm you you can't buy guns and ammo in the same place you can't keep a loaded gun um, around it has to be unloaded there's all of these like regulations um, even people who like do minor violations aren't allowed to own a gun because you have to have a high level of like respect for regulation in general is the thought um and as a result like it's a lot more safe feeling and um they even showed they have like in a gun festival there where people like shoot at targets there's tons of guns around and people shoot at targets and then they have these tents these beer tents set up so people are, there's tons of beer and tons of guns around all at once. And in America, I feel like that people would be extremely alarmed. And in Switzerland, they're, they're very safe about it. And this guy, <laughs> actually the former president of Switzerland was there and just sitting there, just like in, in the beer tent while people were firing guns off. And it was just so funny to see because he was so chill and he's like the former president, you know, like that just wouldn't in the US, like, yeah, you wouldn't do that as a former president because, you know, it's just too risky. Yeah. So just a, just a different culture. Yeah. Yeah. Since we were talking about like our guns and how to move to Switzerland, should we talk a little bit about Serbia and what happened this week? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. No, I don't have anything to say. I just want to oh. talk about it. So, like, oh, no, I think okay. like it happened this week in Serbia. Oh, yes. It was like, so with Serbia, it's kind of the Serbia is kind of like in between and that it has high gun ownership and it doesn't have as high of a rate of mass violence as the US does, but it's also not quite like Switzerland either. With Serbia, people were saying the high gun ownership has more to do with like how, you know, in the 90s, there were, with the breakup of Yugoslavia, there were the wars and the ethnic conflict in, in you know, in Yugos former Yugoslavia, the ethnic cleansing. And um, there's this, so, people so last week there were like a couple mass shootings um both involving well like eight people died in the, both of these mass shootings and one was like a 13 year old kid using his dad's firearm and um one was this guy who just opened fire i think in a in a two villages and um the serbian people rose up like there are huge protests there right now. It's very different from the US because like that happening is like way more shocking. People aren't so desensitized. It doesn't happen all the time, but a lot of people who are protesting this are saying that the, that government officials who regulate the media um, should resign. And some even saying the president of Serbia should resign. And the reason is because the mainstream media in Serbia is 
apparently they have some reality television shows in Serbia and a lot of TV portrayals that involve a lot of violence. And apparently there was, I don't know if you know this, Yurin, but there was like some collaboration from some like Serbian and, and French people in like some sort of show in France. I'm sorry, I forget this, but um, it was something having to do with like um, French people seeing like how violence is so normalized in Serbian like TV. Did you, does that ring a bell to you? I, don't I didn't because I don't follow a lot of reality shows. Um, yeah that involve friends and whatsoever but i did hear now that you say that i did remember that um we know we've known for quite a few years that what we feel as shocking and maybe a little bit too revealing in france is even worse in eastern europe because like there's no regulation in this reality tv shows on on violence, some of them do have guns. It's like um, basically, it's like kind of like GTA, like everything is possible. And uh, yeah, 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 Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we we call this GTA here, um, but it's uh, it's kind of surreal, <laughs> which is weird because it's reality TV. Um, and yeah, I'm surprised that people are protesting about that, but I feel like, yeah, it does influence, like, I feel like for us millennials, I think most of them were probably aware in Eastern Europe that this was just for show, this is ridiculous, and that's not reality. But for someone that is 13 year, is 13 year old, and I grew up with it, maybe it didn't have, like, I, I think what people are protesting is that it didn't have that distance um, that we had because we knew that it was just show and not real and abnormal in our generations. And that might be it. Also, I'm pretty glad that people are protesting in Serbia because um, I was surprised, actually, that the president did anything about restricting guns in the 48 hours and I'm like this doesn't sound like him mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, since we we've known that it's pro violence and that it, it, it yeah. takes um any excuse to just like blame it on minorities and and just get mm -hmm. on with this life and and go with ex third world uh, countries and Russia and things like that Mm -hmm. but the fact that people are protesting um that is uh, pretty grand because it's forcing him obviously it's a political agenda to stay in power but it's forcing him to make changes and i can say i'm mad about that um obviously i would have preferred that it didn't happen in, in the circumstance of like a, a 13 year old like killing people um but like the family in Texas feels like it, it was just a, a spiritual lesson and, and sometimes when people are um you know hard pressed to make a choice and they're not doing it just yet like it's just a push that they needed and I feel like Serbia has been needing this push for change for a long time and uh, I hope this bears positive results so that's that's my take on it but no I didn't see like how it it pertained to reality shows but the fact mm -hmm. that you say that it, it absolutely makes sense to me yeah it's yes like it pertained to reality tv and um it pertains to what they're saying basically the heart of it is that media and government collude in Serbia so the mainstream media is has in Serbia is very pro the ruling party and the ruling party is very pro like um, chauvinistic, aggressive Serbian nationalist. And the, they're, basically it's a government that is any like ethnic resentment, hatred, fear, hostility, like that's what they want. Like that's their, that's their like, 
temporary short-term fuel. The media is totally in cahoots with them. And that's why people are like, people are pointing out that that relationship is, is not good, that it's, it's, they're, they're, they're calling that out. And that's why they're like, yeah, saying that. And that's why the government would like not want to regulate the media because mm -hmm. they're like, well, you know, like you scratch my back, I scratch yours kind mm -hmm. of thing. But it's very interesting because with the yeah. energy that I feel from Serbia, starting with these mass shootings and protests is like a very, um, you know, soft energy, open of current Serbia, which I found surprising. And the fact that <clears throat> I guess the thing is, it's come a time, and maybe I'm wrong about this energy that I'm feeling, but it feels like it's come a time where um, basically the, the government and, and media are outdated and are going to be outruled because the people, people are not choosing um, this chauvinistic violence side anymore. That's not, that's not what I feel anymore for them. And maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like there's a new wave of like very soft, vulnerable, peaceful, stable, you know, Serbia. So yeah, I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? Any other feelings or to just feel like real wait and see how this unfolds? Yeah, I guess we'll see how it develops. And um, I thought it was, I feel that it was cool too, because I kind of feel like um, maybe a lot of Serbians too, they they see that their country is kind of like between like, should we be part of the EU or should we align more with like Russia? Right. And so because people see that and they're seeing the effects of, of what it means to like align with like Russia versus like to partner with the EU, I feel like it's becoming clear to people and maybe people are starting to like realize what they, what they want more, even if it doesn't like mean joining the EU, like they're saying like, we don't want that kind of like authoritarian or like energy, you know? I thought that right. was. Right, and I think that's why the president has not had the power um, to invade any minority or other countries. Um, I'm really glad that these little choices that we feel are, are not so significant or important, but like in the past few weeks, we've been seeing how much it can like gatekeep or guard in a positive way um, the energy of the earth and the, the global energy. I'm really glad about this. I feel like also World War One started in the territory of Serbia. So it almost feels like people are saying, nope, not a repeat of that. No, not on my watch. You know, uh, I'm very glad about this as well. This is nice. It's a nice energy. Yeah, well. Awesome. Um, only thing left is Saudi Arabia. That's a handful as well. <laughs> Um, <laughs> there are a lot to say, but basically we could um, summarize this into um, Saudi Arabia is opening to tourists and allowing LGBTQ people to visit Saudi Arabia and be kind of open about it, but at the same time, like, it's not, like, I think it was pretty well highlighted in the first article that we read about this. Um, it was like, it allows for LGBTQ people as tourists under this um, ban of, of LGBTQ laws. So basically the laws are not changing. And so basically this doesn't change anything for citizens. It changed everything for tourists. And this is reinforced by the fact that it asked 
Marvel and Disney to remove a 20 second LGBTQ scene from the latest Doctor Strange. And I watched this movie, I don't even remember when and how that happened, but yeah, it feels kind of absurd and at the same time, not surprising and at the same time like what the hell is going on <laughs> uh it, it's like exactly the same as qatar from for world cup i feel like this is the same energy that they have been displaying for months of like we show a nice form for people um but on the inside nothing is changing and we're just making alliances in order to you know kind of that opportunistic opportunistic energy that we've seen from Qatar and and them and and maybe even China and things like that so yeah a lot to say how do you guys feel about the energy there it kind of feels heavy in my opinion yeah it feels just like a facade you know and that um like you were saying like nothing's truly changing they don't actually um support anything LGBT LGBTQ plus and um, so it just feels, yeah, there's definitely an agenda there motivated by money, I feel. And it's just like a selfish energy, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I think if, you know, if something was actually changing, we would see there would be that change within Saudi Arabia with for their citizens and everything. And yeah, we're just that's definitely not what's happening. Yeah, I agree with you. I just, I feel like it's just, it's um, like, I want to say almost like painfully obvious or just like comic, I'd, I'd say comically. Yes, comically obvious that they're totally doing like a bait and switch and it's only about the money because apparently um i didn't know this but apparently like i don't know lgbtq plus tourists like that demographic i don't know spends more money abroad than heterosexual and cisgender tourists which i was like um surprised by apparently like countries tourism boards and such are like aware of this and so they really try to like brand themselves as being like gay friendly, you know, and there's certain countries that have really uh, capitalized on that. Israel is one of them. Israel really capitalized on that. You know, I don't know how well it's going uh, anymore with Israel, but, and then yeah, Saudi Arabia, like trying to do that too. I feel like it, it's just, extre it's just extremely cynical and it's just, I don't know why they thought this would play well or if what would happen. I maybe because there's conflict there with their internal politics. Like they're like, we want to attract the tourism dollars, but we also don't want to let up on our socially conservative agenda. So they felt like they pretty much had no choice but to be like, oh, we welcome LGBTQ tourists, but we also like want marvel and disney to like censor their movie you know for us like they felt like they had to do that because they didn't want to compromise on like all of the different um things that they wanted you know so i i don't know what do you have any thoughts on this um anyone else yeah i mean it's making me think of other similar countries in that region in the middle east i just i feel like this is like the um, it's kind of like an overall energy because i definitely feel it in iran the same sort of like putting up a front facade but really everything that the regime does is all about money um and like making money and like forming alliances and all that stuff and so it just it just feels like It's very similar to what they do to their own people in a way. Like it's the same sort of energy because it's almost like um, 
like even though they they give this facade that they're being open and that they care and they're inclusive on you know the the travel thing I, you know at the same time they're kind of being deceptive with with the the marvel but even with that i feel like they're still trying to give like this well it's innocent like we're not asking for anything crazy is just because like no one's gonna buy it basically like I think that's the excuse that they use like culturally no one's gonna buy that a Middle Eastern girl has two moms or something like that um but I feel like at the core of it it's just like this feeling of just like oppression just like this like needing to like because even even with the travel ban like people are gonna start coming because they they like if someone chooses, let's say to travel and, um, you know, they identify themselves as a, a gay man and they, something bad happens to them, like they get assaulted or, you know, whatever, um, then obviously it's gonna, you know, cause problems and there's gonna be all this like disconnect between what they're saying and like the actual reality that's happening. And I feel like that's just kind of like, what happens in the country already in so many ways like you know i've i've never personally been to saudi arabia but you know i've 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 kept up my whole life just because it's in the middle east of just you know all the like social issues with like the freedoms with women and education and like social development and poverty and all that stuff and it's it's always like there's this facade that we're great but then when you open it up it's just like very oppressive i know i was kind of all over the place <laughs> no no it's good and you both just made me realize something really big um i actually didn't even think about the money i was involved in this but it does feel like um all this region is doing the same thing um azerbaijan i'm thinking about as well uh there is something really weird that is happening in Europe. I don't know if you guys have this, but basically there are some sports channel. Um, they're always having advertisement for, for traveling in these regions. And they're also having advertisement for traveling as well in Tunisia and Malaysia. But it's almost always the Middle East. And I was like, whoa they are attractive destinations like culturally um it's super interesting to go there but they present as culturally open as well and, and then we have this discussion when we see like it's not actually the case and like there is a there were jordan but like almost like there were jordan almost in the worst of uh the jordan relationship with other countries uh, which means before 2018, there was always Azerbaijan, Israel a little bit, um, and Saudi Arabia and, and Qatar and Bahrain, and even at the worst of those. And so I was like, well, what is it really? Like, do they think that people watching sports are just like less educated and they're not going to question going there and investing their money there? But I actually feel like it's again like scratching the back of the media and, and about money. Like, what if they invest a little bit of their funds into these channels? Nova is going to give them visibility. And again, it's something about money. And it's like, well, what the fuck? Again, like. <laughs> It's like, I'm tired of hearing the same stories there, but so we're not going to go too deep into them. But what I feel the block is for the people, because we've been talking a lot about how spiritually it was for the choices of like the political parties, but for the people, it feels like almost like a sense of betraying themselves because the things that they want, the culture that they hold dear, um, the peace and freedom that they desire is being used in the discourse of political parties 
to oppress them, not respected, and not shown that way um, to the international public. And so it's like, it's triple betrayed. And so it's like um, even more powerlessness. And it's like, because they hold up a front, a very toxic front of we're doing this to culturally protect our country from the West and blah, blah, blah. Um, they can't even come out of this toxic relationship. And obviously we're seeing like, I ran a lot of people, for example, not respecting the um, cover your air law since the, the protests uh, still today, for example. And, and we're seeing this in, in very small ways, acts of protest. And, and I think it's only going to grow. But for now, that's just in the region in general, which is a huge region with a lot of people, just think about like, being compromised, not respected. You know, I don't know if you feel it that way, but I don't know exactly what is the block, or maybe I'm not able to put it into words, but it just feels like there's a global energy of, yeah, you know. I mean, I feel like you hit on something in terms of like the betrayal and the disrespect. Um, It's because, you know, like, and I know this personally to be true in Iran. I don't know about other countries specifically, but like there is this feeling, especially with like the the revolution in the 70s where, you know, the Shah was ousted. Um, that was definitely like a very prominent feeling, like a betrayal, a disrespect to, and I'm, you know, the Shah had his issues, but I think a lot of people kind of disliked him at a deeper spiritual sense because like he was he was very proud of the culture and just like kind of the heritage of Iran and you know how it like developed and I think for even a lot of people in the country it's like and I we've discussed this before like almost like a denial of some part of yourself and so I feel like that was definitely like and, you know, we may be feeling it in Saudi Arabia, too. It's just because I think Saudi Arabia kind of struggles with similar social issues, um, you know, having a, a totalitarian, total, I cannot say that word, totalitarian, what is it? Totalitarian. <laughs> totalitarian. <laughs> I'm to say it. Um, yeah, that, that type of regime is you know, it kind of creates the same issues. So the way that like women are treated, like the, the social welfare issues, like it is a sort of like disrespect and betrayal of who you are as a, as a, as a people, as an essence, you know. Yeah, definitely. I, oh, any last words, Sage? No, I don't know. <laughs> There's this <laughs> big energy of I don't know, of hesitancy from all of us, but because like there is more to uncover here, I don't think this is the end of, of this discussion. It was very interesting, actually, but um, I'll probably discover more as it's probably not the end of hearing what is happening in this region. I think it's just very funny how Saudi Arabia and Iran at first are not at all friends and, and they're experiencing the very same things, even though they will always say that they're very different. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this will be my concluding words. Um, definitely, we're going to to keep, keep up on this. And uh, thank you for everyone who watched live who watches us on YouTube and don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like our discussion, share if you really enjoy this so we can create more. And yeah, we'll see you in the next live stream. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.